Hello, wonderful souls. Welcome to Guided Space Podcast. My name is Jessica, and I'm a twin flame and spiritual coach. My mission is to create a space to guide you from within. Whether you're seeking guidance on navigating the intricate dance of relationships, uncovering your life's purpose, or simply desiring a deeper understanding of the world around you, this podcast is your compass. Join me in this sacred space as we embark on a journey that will challenge your perspectives while expanding your consciousness, growth, self-discovery, and transformation. Hello, hello, my beautiful souls. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm going to be sharing an episode that I was a guest on with uh, Twin Flame Awakening Journey. We had a wonderful discussion last week and we, it is a little bit long, but we discussed so many things in regards to Twin Flames that I feel my followers should really, really listen to because it was incredible. We talked about how twin flames are not toxic, not what at all what people think they are. And in fact, some people that think that they are toxic most likely are in a karmic relationship, a dynamic. Um, People who pay for guidance, you know, such as psychics and, and all these things, promising to union, you know, just so many different things and why it's so important to meditate and connect with your higher self and my experience that I had with connecting with my divine masculine's higher self and with some really incredible messages that I got and why meditation is just so, so important on this journey because this is such a spiritual journey and it really does help you grow. And it's such a simple technique, yet so many people don't want to do it, but it really, really does help. But anyway, before I go into too many details, I want you to just go ahead and listen to the episode yourselves. I think you'll like it. I think you'll love it as much as I did. I really enjoyed being a part of this episode with her. She is such a beautiful soul. So if you haven't followed her, please go ahead and follow her. She's Twin Flame Awakening Journey. I will go ahead and include all the details in the description of this episode below. And I hope you enjoy the episode. Thank you. Yeah, Twin Flame souls out there. Welcome to the Twin Flame Awakening Journey podcast. And today is an episode number 72. In today's episode, I am not alone here. And I'm very excited that finally... After all of this, one year actually, I'm going to be very honest, I think a year ago, I came across with Jessica one way or another on TikTok. And today Jessica is on a podcast. So you see how the time can change things that year ago, I just came across with her information. And today we are having an episode together. And when I came across with Jessica on TikTok, I really liked her perspective and her way of seeing. And I even remember now, if I recall back, that I remember commenting, I said, this is exactly what twin flames are. And there, because we can see on internet, there's a lot of information. And I'm not here to say I am right. And I'm sure that Jessica is not here to say either that she's right. But we are here collectively to find our perspective and grow together and bring the love and light and realize what is this concept? Because let's be honest, it happened to all of us. It happened to all of us. We cannot deny it. And there is no point for us to make this up. So today I have here Jessica from Guided Space. So you will find her, all of her social media on uh, on the links below. And I'm very excited to have you here. So thank you for coming. and. Give thank us a few for, words. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's been it's been a while. We've been trying to coordinate something and discuss together because I feel like we have very very similar ideas. And I too, when I you know when I heard your podcast and I saw your videos, I thought, oh my god, this woman is speaking my language. We definitely, I feel like we have very similar perspectives. You know, which is kind of like a. Uh, how can I explain it? Like m- more confirmation, I should say, of the information that we're sharing. Because I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't sharing anything based off of what you're saying. It was just like after sharing so much of my con- content and then seeing yours and seeing, wow, this is confirmation of our beliefs and what we're speaking on. Um, but I feel like you get really more in depth. You're very, 
I don't know. I don't know how to explain. You're very soulful about your information. So I just feel like we're channeling very, very similar messages, which I feel is just more confirmation from the guide. So I'm very honored to be here with you and to have this、uh, conversation with you. Oh, thank you for this、uh, word. What you just said, and this makes a lot of. Mm, sense because I'm a big fan of channeling, so-called. Actually,、mm-hmm. normally when I record my episodes, I'm eyes closed. I'm in a meditative state, and that's why I jump from here to there. Today, those who want to see the video version, it's up on Patreon. But otherwise, you hear our voice.、Um, yes, channeling in that sense because when we channel the information, in my opinion, it's the truth. I mean, truth is again very、yeah. perspective. perspective. But when we listen to our soul, when we allow our soul to say something, it's normally so-called the truth. I mean, truth, yes and no, it's perspective. But I just find it that you're going to connect with your soul family, with your soul people when you speak from your soul, and it comes from it. So that's why it's, it's a good word what you just said, and.、Um, So that's what we also we're going to discuss about it because we have many topics in terms of around twin flames, and I would like to actually start this. How do you see so-called? What are the twin flames? How it changed your life, and how do you live alongside with this information, with this、uh, feelings, the energies? If you took, take yourself back when you had no idea about twin flames, and you、yeah. now where you are, how do you see yourself? Well, I. I have to be honest. I do recall hearing about twin flames、uh, several years ago, right? And I remember thinking, "Oh my God, there's this one guy that I thought he might have been my twin because of the obsessive thoughts." And you hear, you know, you hear about certain things. But I remember it didn't click for me, though. It was just like, "Oh, maybe he is my twin," and "Oh, he sparked this fiery thing inside of me." But and then quickly it just dissolved. I no longer cared, right? It was like no, you know, I didn't hear any. Like it, it, I don't know. I can't explain it. It just didn't resonate for me, and that's how I know, looking back, that that person was not my twin flame. So after that, I completely forgot about twin flames. But when I went through my journey, when I when I go back back in time to 2022, I mean, granted, I've been spiritual、um, pretty much my entire life. You know, I've been very, very connected to God on a deeper level. It's not just praying, not just going to church, but very hungry for God, very hungry for that connection with my spirit, with my soul. Who am I? What am I here for? Right. But when you go, but when you go back to 2022, I remember at that time, I was going through a, a, a period in my time where I was just like, "What am I doing with my life? What am I going to do about my marriage?" Because I was already unhappy. Where am I going? Who am I, right? And when I connected with my twin flame, of course, I had no idea at the time that he was my twin flame. But all of these signs were coming up. You know, the the heart pounding when I saw his photo, and the heart sinking into my stomach. And I thought, oh my god, what is this? This is not normal. And then just the quick attraction and the quick connection. And what is this? Like, why am I so drawn to him? And I couldn't like oh my god it was like I was losing like not losing myself but I was losing control of myself right I was literally losing control of myself because I my soul was taking over but I had no idea my soul was just like no this you know what I mean and I'm like why and then of course the the anxiety of like needing him became even stronger and stronger and stronger and I remember my ego just trying to think logically honey like Jessica you're married Jessica this man is married and I remember even telling him in emails like hey we gotta you know I think we could we should like kind of simmer down with our emails um you know you're married I'm married like what are we doing but at the same time we could not contain ourselves <laughs> and, and um And it wasn't until you know going through that dark night of the soul, right? Like you, like I, we had to have that separation. That that moment when I feel felt him drifting apart, my my soul was literally shaking, like my body was shaking because my I was having a soul shock, and I thought, what is this? And of course, my egoic mind doesn't comprehend what's happening to me. You know, the 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 dark night of the soul is like. 
crying, like panic crying. Why am I crying? Why, why, why? This doesn't make sense. And it's like, I knew it was about him, but I didn't want to believe it because you know what I mean? Like, I don't, how is this about a man that I've barely been talking to for just a few weeks? He's on the other side of the world. He's married. I'm married. I know logically this doesn't make sense. Like, come on, you know, yeah. get a grip. And I couldn't. My soul was just like, no, 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 no. Like you can't. And it's like, after that dark night of the soul, like, or during that dark night of the soul, that's, that's when I knew this wasn't normal. And, but I had to find myself. That's what pushed me to find myself and find out what was going on, why, you know, I needed the healing. And so I went to a spiritual healer and trying to get healing. And, and it wasn't until five, six weeks later was when I found like after no contact was when I found out about twin flames and it clicked every, there was no question about it. Like with the other guy, it was like, oh, maybe, maybe not, you know, with him, it just clicked. Everything made sense. And all of a sudden it was just like, I had downloads of information entering me. And I just knew that this man was my twin flame. But I thought, how, <laughs> like not how, but why, wow. or, yeah. or what can I do with this information? What am I going to do now that he's my twin flame? But what happens now is, are we going to be in union? What do, is this just to make me heal? What's the purpose of it? Right? Like trying to navigate it all. And then it, everything, you know, it's interesting. Everything just clicked so well. You know, the other day I had this comment um, on my YouTube and I have to be honest, most of my comments and feedback that I get, I would say 99% of my feedback that I get, like people that I don't know, they're always saying how much my content resonates with them, how it was divinely guided, that it came to them at a time that they needed it. And it's so beautiful, right? And that to me is always confirmation. It's not to boost my e ego and get arrogant, but it's confirmation that what I'm sharing is is a, a truth, or at least for these people, right? You're you're resonating with a lot of content. It makes sense. And I had this one lady leave a comment on my page, and it was quite nasty. However, I, I didn't get triggered. I was trying to see her her perspective and see where she's coming from. And she said, "Oh, the arrogance, or something like that." Um, oh, here's this person who's barely been awakened and she thinks that she can just coach people. And I was just like, you know, I, yeah, I get it. I get your perspective because that was why I was hesitant on coaching because I wasn't in union. And I told her that. I said, I'm not mad at you. Like, I, I get where you're coming from. But there are just some people that know what they're meant to do. They're no, they know what they're here for, right? I think you've been on this journey for as long as I have, correct? Exactly. And uh, I'm going to yeah. touch upon many subjects, what you were just saying to me here. Another day also, like talking about the marriage, like you said, you are married, you come across with a man you never see, like, like you said, yeah. there was this click and you cannot mm -hmm. explain to yourself and you're trying to fight this away. And I also sometimes over here from somewhere where I see it's like, oh, you're normalizing, let's say a divorce or you're cheating on your husband and all these kind of things. Yeah. And I'm going to be very honest. I wouldn't have shared any of these things if I could have been able to sleep. But my soul was waking me up all the time and saying, you need to tell, you need to give the comfort to other people. Yeah. They're going through that. And I was like very still in my ego mind of thinking, well, I know what to do. I know how I got here in the inner peace. I know. So let me be. And my higher self was like, well, do you really think that's how you're going to get away with that? Yeah. And, and I just want to say that none of this journey is easy. If I would have known that this is going to happen to me, I mean, I would have I'm most probably done things very differently. It happened with a millisecond that I had no longer control. Yeah. And when I think about others who are suffering, let's say either in their marriage or in their relationship, or they haven't found, it breaks my heart of thinking because I know that suffering. I know that suffering when you go through something that like for me was like, how can I love another man who I barely know? I have yeah. no, no need for that. Zero yes. need for this. 
and I cannot mm -hmm. stop it. And believe me, I tried millions of things to stop this thing, to get away from it. And I couldn't. Mm -hmm. But today I see this very much. And, and even though, like you said, you, you have managed to get a comment or somebody says, I just feel like I'm going to be very honest. If two years ago, someone would have, even let's say my husband would have walked back home and said to me, I met my twin flame. I would have said, mm -hmm, great excuse to find, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. I know it happened to me and it cannot, nobody can take away from me this experience, what happened to me. And that's yeah. why I, again, I'm going to say, was it so important for you, Jessica, and overall, everybody who feels that they have something to say, because yeah. you never know who is going to help for that moment where they feel like, I don't know what to do. It's like feels, because I know I kept everything inside of me. And that's why I said that was the worst thing I ever did to myself, that I held everything inside of me and i was like okay it's gonna stop it's gonna stop i was like a zombie walking around because i was so afraid of my soul because my soul was telling me the truth and i was trying to hide it so i would also say that yes people can say not to coach or coach or not to or not to but no one would take away that experience and sometimes experience is more powerful than any other let's say uh let's say program or something like this, because you know exactly what this person is feeling. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and just because you've been on the journey, like this person that commented, she said, Oh, I've been on the journey for many years. You know, I've been on the journey for less than two. Right. She's like, I've been on the journey for many years and I've been spiritually awakened for many years and I'm a psychotherapist or something like that. It's like, well, if you're a psychotherapist, first of all, you shouldn't be judging and commenting such negative comment, right? Like you should, Right. Not to be so judgmental. You should be advising in a sense exactly. of saying, oh, listen, well, I heard that point from you. Do you know that there is another aspect for it? Right, because right. we are in this open space. And this is something I find very scary. And we're going to go into that is the spirituality of putting into the boxes of mm -hmm. saying, this is how it has to be. This is how it's going yeah. to happen. And this is the truth. When we're going to do that, we're going to limit and spirituality is not religion. Spirituality is and twin flames in that sense as well. Like it's going to trigger your spiritual awakening, regardless we like it or we don't yeah. like it. Like you mentioned before, I really liked what you said that you had this so-called thinking that somebody is your twin, but there was no that element. That element mm -hmm. was missing. And when you no came across, and, yes, yeah. it started happening. And that's why, yeah. again, everybody who listens and wonder whether I'm not or this, I'm going to say the ground rule normally for twin flames and so called if you're going to put in a box is the spiritual awakening. That something is going to like, like a soup boil inside of you that you cannot hold it back anymore. And you have like double life in that sense that your higher self is coming through you and you're like, who is this? Why this? Okay this is talking like this, why this is coming. Yeah. And at the same time, you're trying to live your ego life as well, but the ego is going to die. It's going to die. Yeah. And it's the most painful. I, you know, and I, and I understand why some people get confused. Like I feel there's many people that are in a karmic situation. Like I was thinking that that person was my twin flame because I could not get that man out of my head. It was like this obsessive thing. And, you know, and and sure, it sparked a fire in me and it made me kind of want to work on myself a little bit. But that's the thing is some people are like, oh, well, I went to go seek therapy after. I'm like, yeah, but you have to have that deep, deep spiritual awakening. I mean, I started getting gifts very fast. I started healing myself very fast. And I think to the point of what that lady was saying, you know, the fact that I haven't been on the journey for that long, it doesn't matter how long you've been on the journey. It's like my friend was saying, you know, because I told her about this comment, she goes, well, think about those kids that are just naturally born yeah. playing piano or having these gifts, right? They didn't have years of experience. They didn't have to go to college. They didn't have to go. They're just naturally born on it, at it, right? You and I clearly had both. Like when you were talking about how you had this calling that you had to share the message with people, but you were afraid because you were married, right? You're just like, no, I'm going to take it for myself, right? I think you said that. Um, I felt that way. I was like, I want to share my experience, but anonymously. So I started doing that, right? I started writing about it anonymously. 
And then I just kept getting the call, like, no, you have to help twin flames. And I, and I was kind of like that woman saying, but I'm not in union with my twin. Cause she told me, she goes, I would never want to guide people to be with their twin if I wasn't in, in union. And I'm like, but that's your ego, right? Cause you still have the information just because I'm not in union with my twin flame yet in the 3D doesn't mean I don't have the information. Because again, I know that it doesn't just depend on me. It depends on him and where he's at in life, right? And I'm, yeah, I'm going to bring I mean, a little I, different perspective from so-called in the sense of union, because we have number one, you are actually energetically in a union because that's what you can feel like on, <laughs> on that moment is yeah. you, you receive that energy that you never, like what you were needing. And that's where the downloads, that's where the, everything starts to happen. And I also would like to say that union in so-called is because what happens, and I understand from people's perspective very well, because when I first came to that journey, like I was willing to leave everything behind. I was like, I could leave with my twin under that breach and I'd be very happy because of this <laughs> energy made me to feel mm -hmm. like cloud nine, like in the sense of like, I have never done drugs in my life, but I would like kind of say that it was like a cocaine that was given to you. And I have never done cocaine, so I don't know, but I'm just going to, what I've heard from the people is like, you are from another universe. You're living somewhere else that around you. Nothing anymore exists. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm going to just say that me, and this is my perspective, why I'm talking about so much of becoming your higher self around this, because when you're going to find the love within yourself, when you're going to find your gifts, when you're going to find the balance within yourself of who you really are, then the chances that your twin flame will return are 10 times higher in that oh, sense, yeah. because if you are in this mindset of sitting, because I like, uh, she's going to come to back uh, to my podcast as well. And she's, she's so right about this. And I'm going to tell that to everyone. We have steps. We have little things we need to accomplish before something can happen. But when you're going to sit and say, hmm, you'll be only mastering this when you uh, have your you, uh, twin next to you. It's not yeah. going to happen. It's the same. Like I was just bring an example athlete when you become an athlete if you're yeah. not running in the morning if you are not doing this if you're not doing that you're not going to be the number one yeah and it's the same of spiritual awakening of becoming your higher self you need yeah. to serve a certain part of you into this world and if then god decides or universe or it's the divine timing that you're going to be in the union with your twin that's yeah. wonderful but that's not the main aim the main exactly. aim is that you're going to you're going to do what you're supposed to, how you're going to serve. And the more you're going to serve, the more you're going to see the reward of mm. what's going to come with it. Yes. Uh, I like calling us so-called, I'm saying you are the creator of your universe and you are the creator of everything that's going to happen. But if you're not creating anything, if you're not serving anything, how do you expect something to grow? How do you accept, accept something to happen? Yeah. And how do you expect to feel the love if you are not, because we can see with the world, we are so insecure. We are so yeah. suffering in love. We are so afraid of love, like the true love. I'm not talking romance for a, somewhere. We are so afraid of the true love because it's going to break mm -hmm. us apart. Absolutely. And uh, that's why for in that so call for that lady, I would just say that actually she has a part to play in it. Even though she's, if she says she's been many years on that journey, then she has some kind of information that we all should hear and see in one form or another. But it's not helping when I'm going to come to your channel or someone else and saying, no, -uh, no, you know nothing. Look at yeah. me. I've been 20 years. It's not helping. <laughs> yeah. And if you've been on it for that long and you're still not in union, like, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's a reason for it. No, no it's offense. Right. But there's a reason for it. And sometimes, yeah, maybe it's because you're not speaking your truth or you're not serving and, or, or maybe because it's not divine timing yet, right? Exactly. There is a reason for it. just because we're not in union with our twin flame in 3D union, because we are in union in 5D, yeah. just because we're not in 3D union with our twin flame does not mean we don't know how to guide people. Exactly. Because if I didn't know how to guide people and you didn't know how to guide people, people wouldn't be coming to us. We're not out there like, hey, come book with me so that you can get in union. No, we're here to help exactly. you with your ascension. We're here to help you grow spiritually and, and understand the fundamentals of this journey because it's not about 
just about reaching union. I know that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants union with their twin flame. And but I'm it's also, about spiritual growth. Yes, it is about spiritual growth. And I know people don't like hearing it. And I, I think when I was in the pain, I didn't like to hear that maybe either. And so I totally understand this perspective. Although what I'm just going to say is when you know finally of who you are, and you are in balance of with your higher self and you are connected to it. It's priceless. It's so priceless that you feel everything around you is alive. You are alive. You laugh about things you haven't laughed for about 10 years. You do things and you feel like, oh, I'm going to go and dance around the pool right now. I'm going to go and dance because I'm alive. I feel myself. Because we limit ourselves a lot with our ego. Our ego is a very good of setting the limitations and not making our dreams come true because our ego tries to keep us alive. That's all it tries to do. But it will never make our dreams come true. And the only way to make our dreams come true is to really connect with your soul and be there. And that's why, like I said, and I'm just going to say this out. It's very easy and I'm going to... I'm not warning here, but I'm just going to say everybody to think about that for a moment. It's very easy would be for me to say, book a call with me, uh, pay, I don't know, X amount of money, and I get you into union. That's how you're going to get to union. And it'd be extremely easy for me to do that because you would believe, oh, she know, I will do that. I will pay that money. I had people who called me up and talked to me and said, just please make sure you will advise for others to say, no psychic, no this know that will get you to the union that people yeah. will not spend money because i have heard how people have spent thousands mm -hmm. thousands on believing that somebody's going to get them to the union yeah and then they That's are right. lost of the money they don't yep. know who they are they are still sitting there and their life is falling apart because because your life is going to fall apart during the spiritual awakening it's going to happen what has to go will go and the new is going to come in but if you are not connecting and you don't know that's why i would say why i'm so-called big fan of yours because you are understanding the fact that the answers you have are within let's find them let's connect with them yeah and no amount of money is going to get you closer to union and in fact it's actually going to push you further away right it's it's okay i feel like it's okay to get guidance right i feel yes. like it's it's okay to pay for guidance, yes. you know, to, to understand your soul, evolution, all that stuff. But when somebody is promising that you're going to get to union and uh, like, I know there's coaches out there that say, you got to take my classes and take the Ascension classes and blah, 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 blah. And you will get to union or psychics will say, Oh, I, like I've had clients that say, I I've paid thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to a psychic. And they said that they just had to clear my energy and I had to do healing and they had to clear all this and that in order to get to union. That is chasing energy. And they, those psychics may have correct information about you because sure, they have the gift to tap in, but they're not going to get you to union because yeah. it's not up to them. It's up to you. Exactly. No amount of energy clearing is going to get you to union. None. Exactly. It, has, it starts within. It's that work you do within. Yes. And that's why I always say, we can get the answers within when we connect to our higher selves. I mean, you don't understand. Like when I connect with my higher self and I sometimes connect with my divine masculine's higher self. Actually, yes. let me share a story. I have a yeah. very beautiful yeah. story. Okay. Yeah. So last month I had an experience where I was meditating and I was just, just, it was a really fun experience. Okay? I was meditating a lot. Okay. And I was connecting with myself, seeing visions and all this stuff. And then I was like, you know what? I, I know I shouldn't chase him by, you know, trying to tap into his energy, but why not? He is the other half of me. I'm going to see if I, if, if his guide, if his higher self allows me to tap into his energy, then he will. Okay. Because sometimes if I try to tap into my divine masculine's higher self, nothing will come through because Sometimes we're not meant to know, right? Now, I had this experience where I was asking him, I said, hey, is there anything that I should know? Is there anything that I should do? And right away, the download I got was, there is nothing you need to do. Just continue being your most beautiful self. 
And I started crying because right away I had a vision of me enjoying myself, dancing, being in my feminine, in the flow. I'm getting chills as I'm saying this. And I remember my hair was just like flowing and I was dancing, being very soft and feminine, which is what I had been doing that day. I was dancing and listening to music and having fun, right? And I felt it in my soul. But then, of course, my ego comes in and is like, oh, well, maybe you're just imagining that. Okay. Then get this. This was confirmation. So he told me, he's like, oh, he goes, I will be there soon, my love. And I've never heard him say that to me. So I knew that that was his higher self communicating with me. He said, I will be there soon, my love. I am just wrapping up for finishing up some loose ends. Just continue being your beautiful self. And then suddenly I get this random channel message that I didn't ask for. <laughs> and he goes, by the way, let your ex um, help you. And I said, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and so that's how I knew it wasn't me thinking this. He said, let your ex-husband help you. I said, what do you mean? I said, do you want me to be with him? Of course, you know, my ego is going crazy. He goes, no, I don't want you to be with him. I want you to allow him to help you. Guess what? That entire weekend, my ex-husband was asking me if I needed help and was helping me with everything. And then the, the rest of the week, because my father was away. So my ex was asking me if I needed help with the dogs, if I needed help with the daughter, our daughter, if I needed help with this and that. And, and mind you, he was not doing that prior because he was acting a little bit cold towards me, you know, like we were kind of, he was just being very distant. And for some reason he was being so loving, so, uh, you know, not affectionate in like a, you know, but just, just being there for me, like a friend. And I thought, oh my God, his higher self was definitely communicating with me. Right. So they will communicate yeah. with you. You don't have to go to a psychic to confirm any of this, you just tap in. And then a few weeks ago, I mean, I, I still don't know if it's true, but a few weeks ago, I asked his higher self to come in through a message in, my, in, in the dreams, because I was getting a buttload of signs that day, like so many signs that day that it was haunting me. And I was like, all right, guys, what does this mean? Does this mean he's coming? I don't need you to torment me. I get, I know he's my twin flame. You know, I don't need all these signs unless he's coming because this is just torture, right? It's it's beautiful to a certain extent because you're like, wow. But then it's like, okay, well, what's the point, right? But I'm now understanding it's their higher self, like trying to remind you of them. And it's just like, okay, our energy is there, right? Don't lose sight of us. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. You're, I know you're my twin, relax. <laughs> and that night I had a dream that he came to me and said, um, that he was, I can't remember if he said he was either in the process of divorce or he is divorced from his wife. And I said, oh, I'm very sorry in the dream. Okay. I said, I'm very sorry. He goes, oh no, don't be. It was mutual. And mind you, I had not dreamt of him in quite some time. And after that dream, I had like four or five more dreams within two weeks about him. And then I had a union dream of us with my daughter. It was, uh, you know what I mean? So I feel like the energy is just getting stronger and stronger. So they will come to you and you will get the answers from them when it is time. But you don't need to go to psychics or whatever. I, what you're describing is something that I am very profound about it. Because, of course, before I came to this journey, I didn't believe any of this. I thought, you know... Another mumbo jumbo, I don't know, whoever came up with that. But that started to happen to me. And that's why we're going to tap into this uh, topic as well. But I, how I always say that when you meditate and you're really going to go closer to your, uh, your, your soul, like that's why I got another day a lot of heat for that when I said that I meditate two, three hours a day. And then we're like, oh, how come you got, like, why are you forcing us to meet two, three hours a day? I'm saying, I'm not forcing anybody. What is the thing is that I like to connect with my soul. I like to receive the messages. And yeah. if, and I'm not here to say that anybody should do that. If you have 15 minutes, that's great too. But I'm just going to say that the more you start enjoying of being with your higher self, the more you want to meditate. It's just, it's yeah, not I something forcefully for me to say, oh, now I have to, I have to sit down. No, 
you're going to enjoy and you're going to be there. And that's the beauty of it. And that's where you start. And I'm always going to say when we have so-called obsessive thinking or the things starting to come to us, it's actually the higher self who is trying to get through you, to give you the messages. It's trying to tell you something. But if, but the only problem is when our mind is active, we cannot hear. That's what, mm -hmm. why meditation really helps. The other thing is, of course, I mean, we all can channel our messages. The only issue is what happens is that our mind comes in between and says, no, 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 that's your wishful thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not real. How do you know that? That's mm -hmm. not what is happening. And, but I, when a year ago, the channeling was done to me and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this other person and I'm like, this is insane. I knew this all the time. But my mind was there constantly mm. telling to me, that's not real. That's mm. not what is happening. You are making this up. This is not truth. But I'm just going to say that we have more senses than we know that we have. And channeling is one of them because we are channeling the energy. We are, as an energy, we are mm. more than this human body, what we have. And what you described is so true. And I've I've experienced so many times like similar things and I'm like, and now, and that's why I say why meditation and connecting with your higher self is the gift that you can do to yourself because you are starting to understand that your mind is fooling you, but your soul is guiding you. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why when we're talking about investing your money, I always say, invest your money into your energy, into your growth into the way you're going to discover of who you are, because there you have the power. And that's why having a coach who's going to get you there, you're going to be forever thankful. Yesterday, I had such a beautiful message from the, because I was posting about the, uh, Dr. Coach Nassar. He's in Bali. I really like his work. And I posted on Instagram. And are we still here? There's a weird noise in the background. Ah, yeah, we have cats. We have cats who are, oh. um, who Cypress cats, they would like to, um, they're waiting, mating. So oh. they are. <laughs> well, they're getting some action. <laughs> they're getting some action. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and then there was about discipline and patience. And uh, I had a beautiful message where the woman said to me, I'm so thankful that you took away from me this chasing energy and realizing of who I am because today I feel like I'm thriving in life. I read a book. I see the people. It's like everything is happening. And so even if my twin is going to return, that's wonderful. But right now the happiness and the love, what I have is priceless. And I know I can do this by myself. And so that's why what you say is describing is an absolute truth. And I can tell you that people can say, oh, this and that. I have too much evidence, too much mm -hmm. evidence today to say that this is not truth. And coming mm -hmm. back to the meditation, I was not meditating. I've been now around seven years, but also it was beginning. It was hard for me. Today, mm -hmm. it's, an, it's like a food for me. It's a yeah. it's food for my spirit. I need this. So I'm just <laughs> going to, even right now, let's say after the podcast, I will sit down for 15, 20 minutes, and I will connect and I will feel and I'll be there. And I go on again. And when people tell me that they don't have a time to do so, I'm like, it's just an excuse because yeah. I have children, I have businesses, I have everything is happening in my life, but I still find the time because set your priorities. And when you set your priorities, magic will start to happen. Exactly. And that's, you know, the thing is, we live in society where everything is a distraction. Yeah. You know, you have your phones, TV, video games, uh, social media, uh, friends, drinking, social gatherings, like everyone is prioritizing everything but themselves, but their souls, right? And how you live your life, like you have to start living through your soul and feeding your soul if you actually want to live a happy life. Right. I mean, I know so many people and bless their souls. I mean, I, we can't save everybody. Right. And, but you want to help everybody. You sometimes like, like I have a friend of mine. I love him so much. He is a soulmate of mine. I love him to pieces. Okay. And he's just been in this relationship with this girl for 10 years, I think nine, 10 years. And they're like roommates mm -hmm. and they haven't, 
uh, been intimate. They don't even sleep in the same room. And I'm just like, what are you doing? And and every time I ask him what he's what he's up to, what is he doing? He's either watching football, playing video games, or watching TV. I'm like, what are you doing, sweetie? Like, what are you doing? And he he's such a beautiful person. I know it because that's why I know he's a soulmate of mine. Because I'm like, we connect so well, yet you're wasting your life away, babe. Like, what are you doing? And and then it's like he's just waiting for something to happen to him. Okay. He's waiting for her to end it with him because he's too afraid to break her heart. You know, I'm like, why? Just do it. If you're unhappy, just do it. You don't have to live your life for anybody. Exactly. But we are so caught up in distracting our lives with all these 3D things that aren't even feeding us with anything. They're not exactly. doing anything good for us. Exactly. And I've said that many times for talking about men's masculinity and all these kind of things that why we don't have masculine men no longer and everything. And I'm, and, I, what I agree with you and one of the things, I, sometimes I'm naive because I, my, like my heart starts beating how much I want to help others. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I jump into, and then again, I have to jump back and realize, okay, I can only do one part. The other part has to be from the other side. So I have to know when to step back, but my heart doesn't let me to sleep because I'm seeing the potential. I'm seeing yeah. what the person could become. I can yeah. see everything. And then it breaks me inside when I'm feeling like, oh my God, you could be all of this, but you are not going within, you're distracting. And coming back to them, I had another day, accidentally, actually it was a call, but I, it was never an accident because everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And I'm just going to say that we see that things are free for us, so-called social media that you consume, um, porn, what you consume, all these kind of things are for free. Mm -hmm. But they are for free for a reason, because they're going to distract you. They're yeah. going to take away from you of who you really are. Yeah. And so that's why, again, I'm not here right or wrong, but I'm just going to say, be very careful of the content you consume, of the things you think, oh, you see, it's for free. It's like accessible for me anytime, any place. It's accessible for you anytime, any place for a reason that's going to take away from you something of who you really are yeah. instead of shut it down and start going within. And yeah. it's not the fun part. I know it's not. I know it's not. None of us want to sit down without our true self and be honest. It's, it's a hard I, part. I actually love it now. I mean, I'm with you on that. When you said like, oh, I need to meditate. It feeds my soul. I, I, it's like a necessity now, right? It's kind of like eating and breathing. You feel like you have to do it in order to survive, in order to live. That is how I feel too. If I go a day without meditation or doing some Reiki or, or, or even just, just going within, right? I don't, yeah. I don't have deep meditations every single day, but I make time to sit in silence, sit with my thoughts and be aware right? Yeah. That is what it helps us do and become is be, it become, we become self-aware. We it become exactly. the observer of everything around us yeah. and analyzing our feelings. I mean, last yeah. week was such an incredible week of purging. I don't know if you felt it. Yeah. And I talked about it on a post, how I feel like we were as a collective, we were post, uh, purging karmic cycles. Yes. I mean, there was so much coming up for me that I needed to heal. Uh, I ended up healing like uh, emotional abandonment wounds with my father. And I ended up, you know, talking to him about it, like actually like in his face, like talking about the stuff that happened, not blaming him because I know it's not his fault, but just discussing it. Um, things that came up, you know how you mentioned the, um, we see the potential in these people when we want to save them, I actually found out there's a term for it. They're, um, they were what's known as a rescuer. We want to save wounded souls. And so it's like, we want to save these people that we, that are kind of, you know, quote unquote damaged, right. Or mm -hmm. unavailable or, you know, going through some tough times, but we see the potential in them. And I have been that way my entire life, always trying to help people like, come on, like, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. But that takes my energy away. If I'm trying, like you said, like you can do your part, but they have to do theirs. And so that was something that I had, we was purging as well. Yes. And just, just so much for you too. Exactly the same, wow. exact same purging, exact same thing where I had to face myself of realizing, yes, 
I have one part, but I cannot. Um, if there is no energy coming back, I because I I am, I could give anything of me to see you succeed. Like for yeah. me, it's like it's the biggest happiness when I see. Wow, look at you of who you yeah. are, have become, and I had exact same. And I'm gonna say few things like you said the virgin exact same energy i do believe that was also because we had the new moon in a sense of coming with a co completely new energy and there was a sivaratri what we did all yeah. of that started to come out of us and mm -hmm. i always say the purging is not like fun part it's exactly that it comes like with a with a pain and realization and the yeah. energy because energy is powerful and exact same thing exact and I, yeah. I and and it really i'm gonna be very honest for a my for a while it made me to question why am i doing this what is the like i cannot change i know i cannot but then again my higher self steps in and says you're here to do that so yeah. you're doing the right thing continue and then i receive an email when a person just says to me you know how much you helped me today with your story or podcast and then it's just everything stops for me and i'm like yeah. yes yes yeah. yes oh my god the same thing happened to me when that when that woman commented on my youtube and and all that and i and of course i've had doubts before like why am i doing this should i really be doing this and i like back in january there was a really big shift in me and i haven't talked about this yet but i started questioning is this really what i should be doing am i even you know doing the, the, the right thing am i even if i am i even helping am i really, even really helping twin flames because i started doubting like i'm not even in union you know the whole ego thing yeah. right maybe i should be focusing on something else etc cetera, etc cetera. and then of course same thing that right after that woman sent that comment i, I don't know if it was right after but the next morning i had a beautiful message um actually various messages from people but there was one specific one that just stood out to me about my interview and everyone's just like oh my god thank you so much for being so vulnerable and open because that was hard for me to talk about my journey now i don't care but <laughs> at the time i was really nervous um i'm like hey if he watches it okay cool enjoy <laughs> but at the time I was very nervous. And so these people were saying, oh my God, thank you so much. It resonated so much with my journey too. You don't know how much you mean to me. You've helped me so much. I'm like, you know what? Thank you. Like, thank you for confirming what I'm doing here is for a reason. And I'm, I don't ever want to doubt myself again. Yeah. It's, but it's hard, but yeah, what, to what you were saying earlier, wanting to save people it's interesting how that was coming up and you're not the only one that said that because i told him and another follower of mine she's like well what was coming up and i said well it's you know i explained to her something about validation and rescuing blah 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 she goes oh my god me too but what was interesting is even though it was so it was almost quite painful for me like it almost felt like a mini dark night of the soul but it had nothing to do with my twin flame it was just like an ego death like a part of me was dying, was shedding, because that's what happens on the ego death. Yeah. You are literally shedding layers of your ego, right? So that your new version can, the, you, you can be reborn, a newer version of you, a better, brighter version of you. And that's why I love purging as hard as yeah. it is to go through it. I was just like, I was up at the pool and I was crying by myself, taking notes down. I was journaling and I'm like, I don't care. I know that I'm going somewhere with it. And the journaling of it is what helped me so much because I'm like, okay, I would question myself. Why am I feeling this way? Where does this come from? Where does this stem from? Where, you know, what could possibly have led? Okay, well, okay. Oh, okay, I get it. I was, my father wasn't really there, et cetera, et cetera. So I had, you know, like as an example, yeah, um, he was there physically, but not emotionally. He didn't know how. Oh, okay, but his grand, his father also didn't know how to be there for him. So da, 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 da. you know, just like getting to it. And then other things um, like, oh, you want to help people. You want to fix people, but you know, it's not your job. And it just like, it was so profound and enlightening that girlfriend after that, I remember coming to, you know, normally when we cry, our face gets puffy and we look like crap yeah. afterwards. Girl, I came home after I had been crying and then I felt amazing because I, you know, I was like, wow, I understand. I understand now, right? I purged and I understand. 
I came home and I swear I had never looked so beautiful after crying. Yeah. Yes. I was glowing and I thought, what the heck? It was, I literally had this glow around me and it wasn't like, cause I had my makeup done or anything. Cause of course I cried it all off, but it was just, my skin was glowing. I, I can't explain it. There was in even my eyes. And I remember my eyes looking lighter, like my twin flames. And I thought, oh my God, this is it. Like we are purging. We are being renewed. This is, this is what we have to go through. And I know it's so hard to anyone who's listening. I know it's so hard to go through. But just remember, when you have a breakdown, when you are going through it, you have to go through it in order to get to the other side. And I promise you, you will see light at the end of that tunnel and you are going to feel so much better. You're going to feel like it was all worth it. You're going to know it was all worth it because trust me, I personally, I don't want to be who I was two years ago. Yes. I am so proud of the work that I've done. Even if I don't get into 3D union with my twin flame, I am so proud of how far I've come and who I've become and who I continue to become and grow. It is so powerful. I wouldn't change it for anything. That's why if like, if I had to go through this journey again, hell I would because I'm proud of where it's led me. I don't want to be stuck in that 3D self being lost and wondering where I'm going in life. Uh, exactly and i that's why i say that not to it's gonna pass but you have to go through it i like to bring it as an example that you're gonna go through when the baby's coming through a mother's um tunnel so-called tunnel you're gonna come through the tunnel to the light it's the same with this you're gonna have to do this by yourself and Mm -hmm. and even when you go through it it's gonna feel all new it's gonna feel all like different But step by step, you're going to love it. You're going to see more. You're going to sense more. You're going to have this energy. And it's an ongoing, ongoing process. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say that even though we like to, it's so much romanticized around Twin Flames, I'm going to say that Twin Flames is going to change. Let's say if you're running a business right now, or you're thinking of running a business, or you're thinking a new job, or you're thinking of new place of living, it's going to change everything alongside because of your energy. You're going to go to the right place. Like I've said many times, I've been an entrepreneur since the age of 19. My understanding of entrepreneurship was hard work, only work hard, only do this. Yeah. My twin flame taught me feminine energy, which means allows things to happen, allows me to be this that i'm already deserving it i'm already creating it it's already happening but before i was in my masculine which nearly killed me so Mm. we shouldn't like we have to find our energy in a sense of who we really are and that's what's going to teach you so that's why i say never ever save your money on the investment of your energy because that's going to change everything but if you spend your money like i said Someone's going to promise it's going to happen to you. Someone's going to do this. <clears throat> Very unlikely. And what yeah. you said about here and talking about saving, my Reiki master, actually, she told me the golden words and I still have a heart to practice it. But she told me the golden words she said, don't think, because her master told her, don't think of yourself so much that you are the one who's going to save the world. And that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Because we kind of exactly give our part now depends what this other part is going to do with this. Because yeah. if I am going to give you my best advice, I'm going to sit down here today with you. I'm going to give you the best advice, best things I know. But if you are not implementing them, that's where it stops. And that's all I can do. I can do my best of being my best. But if the other part is not taking this and not starting it, there is no results. And that's. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. So that's where you have to like, I kind of realized, okay, I have to really, really go low of realizing I do my best, but what is the outcome? Is, is there outcome? I, I can't force them, even though sometimes I feel like I want to force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of the same thing with our clients, right? Like, <clears throat> excuse me, when we have clients, like we can guide them the best possible way. And we can give them the answers that are channeled for them. Like I've had most of my clients, my sessions, they're all different because I've noticed just recently how 
specific they are to each client. Like I'm not even, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what I told that person because I know that the message was for that person and they receive it very well. However, it's up to them to do what they want with that information. Are they going to actually take the action? Are they going to take the steps to do where, you know, what they should be doing or what I feel they should be doing anyway, um, to, to better themselves. Right. But you also have to look in within, right. I could be giving you information and then you'd be like, well, I don't feel like that, that Mm -hmm. resonates. Right. Sometimes people give us information. We're like, "Mm, that doesn't resonate. And that's okay. Exactly. And that's okay that's too. We have to listen to our soul and what does our soul want? What exactly. does our soul feel, right? But again, it lead, comes back to meditation, connecting with your soul, your higher self, and seeking, going within. Because if yes. you're going to be seeking everyone else for answers, you're not, no. you're not going to no. go in the right direction. No, and not at all. I, so I agree with this so much. It's exactly that you have all the answers inside and sometimes it's difficult to hear that's why yeah. you're going to reach out to someone who's going to yeah. and i also agree with the fact that sometimes things don't resonate and sometimes they don't happen because like you said and this is why i love that i get to have calls individually because i don't believe in a one method kind of thing i just don't believe this i yeah. don't believe that you're going to block somebody and they're going to come back because every soul i've spoken to is so different as different energies that they are holding on to. So if I would tell you, okay, you're going to do this, the next one I'm going to it's not going to work. And it's the truth. And um, But the only way to know what's going to work for you is when you start listening to this, yes. this heart yeah. over here. Yeah. And the magic will start to happen. And that's why I'm very happy that I know that there are some others out there who I respect as well, but overall of a respect of you that, you know, it's, you're trying to help them to find them who they are. And once they find who they are, the magic will start to happen. And it's not, I mean, because it's very easy to use people on this journey. Like I haven't watched, but I know you did watch some of the things that where people been manipulated into something which this is something where my higher self gets very, very upset. It's something I get very restless and uh, and I don't know how to cope with this. I'm like, what is this thing? Twin flames, the last thing they are is the manipulation, yeah. the lying. And yeah, I mean, manipulation, I would say that you yeah. no longer know your own truth. Yeah. That breaks me. <laughs> Yeah, it it, it broke me too. And I have to be honest with you, like I struggled watching it. I remember I was being, I was sick to my stomach watching that documentary. And then they came out with the second one. The first one was on Amazon. The second one was on Netflix. And when it came out on Netflix, I was like, oh, great, because everyone has Netflix. But the Amazon one made me sick to my stomach. And I remember I would, you know, make commentary on my stories about it because I was watching it. Mm -hmm. and, And then I would have to pause it because. I was sickening to me. And I thought, there is no way these people are twin flames because twin flames would not do this. Twin flames, if in case nobody knows, twin flames, for the most part, I've, I've seen, they're very pure souls, right? Yes, we've all sinned. We're not perfect. Yeah. But they, they are good hearted, like people, individuals. They're very, very pure, uh, loving, compassionate. They want to help people. They know that they're here to serve humanity or serve people in some kind of way every single twin flame i know it just has such a big heart okay now those people who clearly manipulated and try to change people's genders and and said that you have to pay in order to get to union and and saying that you can find your twin flame and then trying to assign people their twin flame within a group i'm like you have got to be kidding i was pissed i was so angry i was so this can't be, there's no way. Cause I remember seeing some of their content and thinking, well, you know, they have some really good content. It resonates, but something is off. Like I, and I, I remember watching the, the, these, the sub coaches, not the main coaches the sub coaches. And I'm like, why do I feel like they're being forced to do this? Like there was just something off about their, their YouTube videos. And I thought, is there someone like making them do this? Like, is there, you know, like it was like, it, like, like they look like robots almost, especially when they had the, the, the girl and the guy talking. It's like the guy felt forced. 
Like they didn't really believe that they were twin flames. They're just going along with the script. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's just something was off. And this is exactly why I say, trust your higher self, because when you trust your higher self, you're going to know what's for you and what's not for you. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if you're okay with talking about this. Are you going to edit this, by the way? <laughs> We're going to go pretty much, I think, in a free form, more or less, uh, everything okay. that comes from our soul. But uh, yeah. yeah, I what I want to say is okay. what you said here. Energy cannot lie. Yeah. And I had that witnessing another day when I did a retreat and I was able to witness the energy. And then I realized energy cannot lie. We can lie with our words. We can lie with our things. We can script. We can think. We can do. But energy cannot lie. And once you understand the energy, you understand everything, which means you can sit across me and I can look at you. You tell me something. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I, I understand where it comes, but this is not part of you, for example. So mm. that's why, again, why to become your higher self or, and also being a twin flame. Twin flames, like you said, in my opinion, are the purest form of love. And to know if you are really on this journey, you are the purest form of love. It's just the essence, the essence is there. And, and that's why when I hear the negative part of it, where somebody's been, I, I feel like it breaks me because I'm like, no, that's nothing like twin flames are. They are nothing like toxic. They are nothing like manipulation. This is not twin flames. Just take mm -hmm. away from this part. And that's why I feel like when people start getting that way, that they're actually karmics. They're, they're not in a twin flame dynamic because not once that I can think of, have I ever said anything negative about my twin flame? I remember when, when he ghosted me at first, when like, you know, when I went to California and I didn't even explain this on the, on my interview with Manjinder, but I went to California and I was hoping to see him and he didn't, he only reached out to me the day before I left. And I was devastated. Like he knew I was going to be there, but I was devastated because I so badly wanted to see him in person just to see what could come, like not what could come out of this, but like what this was. Like I was like, I have to see you in person. Like I saw you on video call. I want to see you on per in person because I want to see if they, like what this is, right? Obviously I didn't want to cheat, but just, just to see in person what, what this was about. And when he reached out to me in email the day before I left, I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like just now, right? I was upset. I was hurt. And then, um, but I went with it and I was still in my loving energy for him. And I was just like, okay, it's okay. Like I, I get it. You know, like I know that whatever this. And then when I didn't hear back from him after I left uh, California, I, I was going through my dark night of the soul. A part of me wanted to email him. and tell him off, tell him off. Like I, I was hurt, but you know that my soul wouldn't allow me to do it. My soul was like, no, like he's a good man. No, because he's a good heart. There has to be a reason for it. Never in my wildest years would I have done that with any other person. If I had ever felt ghosted or betrayed by a man, I would have told him off. I would have been like, F you you're a douche, you're this, you're that, like I would have called him out for it or I would have just, you know, move on to the next one or something, you know? And with him, it was like, I couldn't gather the strength to tell him off and tell him what my ego wanted me to say and say, how dare you for playing with my feelings for this and that, you know, you led me on, you, whatever. And it's like, well, first of all, he's married and you're married, so <laughs> you can't say any of that. But, you know, I felt really hurt. And I got to tell you, what was really interesting is I had an email drafted I was going to send. And my soul just kept saying no. And over time, I would rewrite that draft. I'm getting all emotional. I would rewrite that draft to where it was getting more and more loving. Because of my true feelings and my true love was really coming out for him. And it was almost just like a way of processing my feelings, right? And then three months later, three months of no contact, that's when I finally sent an email to him with so much love. And I didn't say anything about Twin Flames, but with so much love, letting him know that no matter what happens, I care about you. 
and I will always feel a connection with you because that was what he said. He said that he felt a connection. And I felt so much love for him. I didn't say I love you, but I just said, I feel, you know, I will always care about you, feel so much love and blah, 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 with zero expectations of him responding, right? But all of it came from a place of love. And what I'm getting at is when you are a true twin flame, your soul will not allow you to speak ill of your twin flame to speak and have resentment towards your twin flame i have a friend of mine who thinks that her person is her twin and i know downright that that is karmic i know we've confirmed it in kashiks and i've even confirmed it with her partner he does not feel the same way right but she won't believe it and i'm like you know what it's her journey if this is her journey, she has to figure it out for herself. But she has spoken so ill towards him and about him and called him so many names. Never could I call my twin flame any negative names, no matter how hurt I felt, no matter he's ghosted me, I don't know like how many times. But I know deep down that it was to teach me something. And I know that it's also very intense for him. I have compassion for him. And that's what we have to do for our divine masculines. And I'm not saying that we just have to let them slide and take them in with open arms every time they come back. No, you still have to establish boundaries with them, but have love for him or them. It's like, if you feel resentment towards your twin and and it's okay to be angry. It's okay to feel hurt, right? But sit with those feelings and ask yourself, why? Where is this coming from? What is this triggering in you? What is this trying to teach you, right? I had no self-love at the time. I didn't know my self-worth. And that's what him ghosting with me was allowing me to do. If we didn't have that separation, I wouldn't have gone within. And people have to understand separation is preparation. Separation is needed for us to grow. If I continued talking with him, what would have happened? I would probably would have cheated. We would have had an affair. Would have, you know, I wouldn't have loved myself. I would have been like, what the heck? What am I doing? No. No. I'm glad I didn't see him in person because I was a mess. It's like, oh, you you describing me hundred percent. You're describing I, me hundred percent. I, I had zero mess. yeah, yes, I had zero yes, self love. Same zero understanding of who I am. I only believed hard work, getting there, doing things. I was never in the so-called negative in the sense, but I was extremely hard on myself, extremely yeah. hard. If something would go sideways, I would beat myself up of like, you have to do this way. This is how they are. And how can I even grow? And how can I even serve when I'm beating myself up daily of not being perfect, of not re reaching to that there's no way. And that's why I'm forever thankful that the twin flame came on the right time, on the right place to my life to show me, you need to start loving yourself. You need to see who you really are and how amazing you are. Because now when I, because I mean, I'm in my other business. When I go back and I look at my work, I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Did I do this? But back then, I could look at the same work and I would go over, mm -mm, here is a mistake, here is this problem, here is this thing, here is, no, 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 that's not good, it's not going to happen. Like, yeah. never, ever finding a love within myself. And my twin flame showed me this and it changed everything. Like today, I really feel I'm like the free bird who is flying around and and just experiencing, just living, just being part of everything so yeah twin flames they are never toxic so that's what uh and i'm just gonna say also another thing about the words like you said when somebody uses very low vibrational words words have energy and how do you expect their love to grow when your any other word is nothing even close to love yeah it's not gonna happen I, I literally cannot say anything negative about my twin flame. I mean, huh. I don't care that he goes to me. He goes to me for a reason. He he had to run. He had to work on himself. Like even this last time that he goes to me, we, we haven't talked since November. Um, he came back in my life in October and told me how he felt and it was beautiful and that he couldn't stop thinking. Like, yeah, it was very cute. I forgot to mention that in the interview too. 
And we were talking on and off for a month. And he honestly, like in the beginning, it was triggering me because he would go like two weeks without responding to an email. And I'm like, you just promised me that you didn't want to lose touch. And yet here you are doing it again. And I thought, that's okay. I know that this is happening for a reason. You need to chill, Jessica. Like, cause my anxiety was coming back up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then I realized it's not time yet. Mm -hmm. He still has things to work out. You still have your marriage. You haven't finally, you haven't officially divorced yet. Relax. And as soon as I got that process, I was fine. So when he left again without saying anything, I wasn't triggered at all. At all. I was like, it's okay. Run along. Go do what you need to do. Go take care of yourself. I hope you heal. <laughs> exactly. I hope he does heal. And that's why, like, I'm not upset. I'm not upset that he left. If he left, it's a good, it's a good sign. Especially if I'm not triggered. That to me shows, okay, I'm, you know, I got to take care of myself, but now it's his turn. Yeah. Right. Because exactly. usually that's what happens is like, you know, the divine feminine goes through their dark night of the soul and they get triggered and all this stuff and they're healing and healing and healing. And usually like some months later, the divine masculine comes back in confessing their feelings or whatever. And then all of a sudden they run again and it's their turn to heal. Yeah. It is their turn. It is their turn to go through dark night of the soul. Granted, they might not, you know, get awakened spiritually like us, of course, but they're going to feel they feel that connection and they're going to go within and do the work that they need to do most likely on a mental level because they are the 3d twin. So they're going to most likely be going to therapy or meditating or seeking help in some form of way. Right. At least I hope. <laughs> yeah. And, and also what you're describing here in that sense, you're describing here something very beautiful is that you trust the love from now on. You know that the love is there. And no matter what is the time and space in between, you know that this love is there and it's not dying and nothing's going to happen. So you're not feeding even the energy into, oh, if I'm not going to say this, if I'm not, and I've been all of the stages, so I know very well, but the moment you have that peace and the realization that, yeah, the love is here. Like, I know that I don't have to chase for it. I don't have to prove it. I don't have to show it. It is here. Yeah. And that's the magic of, uh, of so-called actually union as well, because you are so in peace that it's here. Yeah. It's already here. It doesn't matter if he's physically here or not. It doesn't matter because I feel that love, right? Yes. Sure. Of course I miss him from time to yes. time. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people are like, oh, but if I miss him, if I think about him, is that chasing energy? Like, no, of course you're going to think about them. They're the other half of you. Like, there, you love them unconditionally. Like your twin flame teaches you what unconditional love is. Uh, love is exactly. So of course you're going to love them and think about them and miss them. But if you're like obsessively thinking about them, then yeah, that's chasing. Like you're not chasing, but you're still in that stage of not going within. Yes. And not listening mm -hmm. what it is, because I'm going to also say that what I have so-called figured out about obsessive thinking, so-called what we have, it, it's not actually so-called so much obsessive of your thinking. It's the higher self that is coming through yeah. to remind you everything. So yeah. that's why you constantly have that energy around that you're trying to get rid of, but you can't get rid of because you can't get rid of the energy if you don't, act, uh, if you don't connect with this. Yeah. So so-called obsessive thinking is actually the energy. The higher self is coming through you to show you, to tell you everything. And then you're trying, because I did that. I was trying to get as far as possible from this because I was like, okay, it has to stop. Like somehow it has to stop because I am no longer in control, but this is exactly, you are no longer in control because it's the energy and energy is so much more powerful. And when we thinking, so-called thinking of our higher, like it comes through and that's why we have the misunderstanding a little bit of obsessive thinking and thinking I'm like, no, if you feel that your twin is coming through you, some, something yeah. tells you sit down and say, Hey, you're here again. Okay. Tell me, tell yeah. me what I need to do. Tell me what, and they tell you everything if you're willing to listen. Yeah. But if you run from it in that sense that you're like, no, this has to stop. I cannot. Otherwise he's not coming back. Yeah. 
then you're not hearing what is what is the message what is the you key know, i love that you brought that up because um two things i wanted to point up <clears throat> so when i was going through the obsessive stage i remember the first month i was just like no this can't be it like i'm married he's married he has like we live on different continents he goes to me forget this god please make him go please make him out of my head take him out of my head take him out of my head and i will never forget how sick i would feel yeah trying to get over him i was like feeling nauseous as if i was you know when you're pregnant pregnant and you have that um morning sickness right i was like am i pregnant there's no way i'm pregnant i was getting headaches i remember i had um uh so what do you call it uh is it cysts no uh, like a growth on the back of my head mm. the the swollen lymph nodes Places, yeah okay and i didn't even know we can get it up here they were so bad i was like do i have a tumor like what is yeah, this yeah. it was so bad because i was trying to fight it so hard mm -hmm. like i was like no this has to go this doesn't make sense he doesn't even want me he goes to me because i was trying to think logically yeah. yeah and then i finally when i finally surrendered i stopped getting sick yes i stopped yes the the obsessive thoughts just stopped yes and then of yes. course we go through that stage yeah. of like well if i'm not obsessive if i'm not obsessively thinking about him if obsessively thinking about him does that mean he's not my twin so many people get to the stage where they're yeah. like finally yeah. detaching you know the the obsessive stage and they're like well is that does that mean he's not my twin it's like no it doesn't mean that it just means you're finally surrendering and you're connecting because yeah. i was constantly meditating yes. every day yeah. every day yes. connecting with my higher self yes. so of course naturally you're gonna feel yes. that yes. peace yes. right but of uh, 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 the second point that i wanted to make about that is like Unfortunately, I tried again two months ago yeah. where I was going to go through like a detox because that was when I started questioning my job. And I was like, well, what if I'm not guiding people the right way? Maybe I do have to detox completely, just completely shut him out of my life. And, and you know, I followed this other creator um, uh, on YouTube and he talks about detachment and detox and you got to, you know, don't look at their social media. Well, of course, and I don't even look, do that, but don't look at old emails or conversations or look at photos. I'm like, I don't even do that. And then it was just like, you just got to detox, 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 and not even talk about them, not even think about them, not think about and talk about them, nothing. And I'm like, okay well for a living i talk about twin flames which then reminds me of my journey so what do i do there like and it was just like what do i do and i remember there was one day where i was going to start this detox journey in that same day i was sick to my stomach i remember feeling so low as if i had an entity a dark entity attached to me and I didn't realize that it was because of that. You know, it was just kind of like, oh, I don't feel good. I don't know. Something's wrong with me. Like, I just don't feel good. And then I remember that night I was talking to my friend about it. He's on the journey as well. He's, he's a divine feminine. He's such a sweet soul. And he told me, Jessica, why are you trying to move on when you know he's your twin flame? Why are you trying to detox when you're not even obsessed with him? And I said, I don't know, because I'm just wondering if I got it all wrong. You know, like I was questioning myself and he's like, Jessica, you're not doing it all wrong. Remember, and, that, and that's, I think that was when I contacted you and we were yeah, talking about that whole new theory that came out about the reincarnation thing and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, do I have it all, do I have it wrong? Do I have this all wrong? I mean, what if I'm doing it wrong? And he's like, you're not doing it wrong. It's just not time yet. And you told me the same thing. It's just not time. And it all comes down to divine timing. And that night, I remember I was on my computer and I saw 2222, two, 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 which is a number I rarely ever see. And then there was this song that came up I had never heard before. And the artist had his name. <laughs> you know, all within the same time, you know, and I like, and it's hard, it's very rare for me to see his name because his name's not common. And so, and then 
as I was going to bed, I was feeling that loving energy. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Like, what am I doing? Why would I try to detox when I'm not even obsessed? Like, this is stupid. This is obviously for people in the early stages. What are you doing? And there was this uh, song. I can't remember what it was, but basically the girl's name had his name in her name. Like it would like she had the girl version of it. And it was like something about like the song was like pray for him or something like that. And that was what my friend had just said to me. And I, and I, again, another song I had never heard before. And I thought, okay, that's no coincidence. That's clearly a sign. So I quickly went back to my loving energy and I was no longer going to try to detox him because it's pointless. But the thing is we, we get impatient and we start to question Mm -hmm. ourselves, but People need to remember, we all need to remember that there is divine timing in everything and we have to just surrender. And again, the more we go within and listen to our soul and whatever doesn't feel right to you will make you sick. Okay. Like I've mentioned before uh, to you outside of the call that that other theory going around you know, about twin flames, that, that, you know, your twin is just a a past life reincarnation, past life of you. That does not resonate with me. And I know some people are resonating with it or they agree to it and whatever. It makes me sick to my stomach. I literally start shaking. And it's again, it's not because I don't want to believe it. It's not because of my ego. My soul literally feels sick listening to that. And that's how I know that that's not my soul's truth. It doesn't mean that it's not true for other people. But for me, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that I listen to my body very easily because my, my soul tells things through my body because I'm um, clairsentient. So I feel things very easily. So when it doesn't feel right, my stomach is just like, I'm like, Oh, and I feel like I'm going to vomit. Yeah. So I know that that theory is out the window for me. I 100% agree with you with the fact what you're saying that your body tells you everything immediately. If that doesn't resonate with you or something is not right, you feel this immediately. And that's why, how do I say, why I'm a, extremely careful of the information and everything I am consuming or also the people I surround myself with is because for me to go through all of that is like someone is stabbing me and I have to stay calm on this moment and realize what is is happening so that's why of course the meditation is my tool of understanding what is happening yeah but if something is not sitting right with me like the same with detox when i was hearing this that you need to detox stop thinking about it and i did that like you said it nearly killed me it nearly killed me and so from there on i realized this is not working for me this is not the reality this is not what is for me maybe it works for somebody else and i'm not here to say but i had and just i know which like in the sense of the coach uh, like who has this new idea and i had a person who came to the retreat and she had taken his class his his course Mm -hmm. and i just asked her friendly i said tell me what is on this course and tell me what is happening and tell me how it's gonna change and and then her answer was like you know what Nothing what I just experienced can ever put into what I learned from that course because it didn't sit with me at all, but I still paid and I did. And I'm not saying it's not working. I still have a huge respect. But what I'm just saying is you have to listen to your soul. And this is where the answers are coming from. My truth might be not your truth and Jessica's truth might not be your truth. But when you hear and you're connected with your soul, you're realizing hmm, that can work for me. That can yeah. help me. That's how I can get there. But yeah. if you're constantly seeking new information here, new information here, new information there, you're going to feel like you said, you feel sick, like you are fighting against your yeah. own nature. Yeah. Against your and, own nature. Yeah. And that's, that's, I would just, in a sense of, I would like to say that, list, like connect with yourself, Speak up the truth that resonates with you and start working on this and the magic will start to happen sooner or later. A year ago, I would have never thought I'm going to have a call with Jessica here when uh, or, uh, when I was forced to to start doing this because I was like, no, I will never do that. But here I am and I'm now so thankful. 
because I get to meet Jessica, I get to meet other people, and I'm seeing, okay, even though sometimes it feels like it's not the right thing, deep down me, I'm like, if we cannot change even 1%, 1% that somebody walks around with a love in their heart and happiness and thriving in life, then that's all I need, or okay. that's all what we're supposed to do. And I'm fine with that. Exactly. That's all that's needed. I'm so proud of us, honestly. Like, I never thought that we'd, I'd be here as well, you know, working with you. And I love your content, love your content. And I'm so, like, proud of you for, you know, hosting that retreat. I, I want to I wanna know more about it. Like, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about it on today's call, but we, one day I would, I would love to know how it went and how you did it. Because that's my dream is I was hoping this year I would host retreats here in Portugal as well. Portugal uh, is amazing. For Divine Feminines and, or Twin Flames, whoever, just to connect with their soul, exactly. connect with their higher self. I'm, so, yeah, I'm going to have to come I'm, to I'm you. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> we're uh, definitely going to keep cut to days, but I'm just going to say one of the things, what I really re recognize this, and that's why I had a battle with uh, the purging, what you were saying. If we really want to see the change and the shift, it has to happen in person. It has to happen in that moment. We have to have, like, do the processes together and show it because then the magic will start to happen. So, of course, on Saturday morning, like I said, I woke up and I was said, I will never do this again. And Sunday I was like, oh, so much work is ahead. And now, of course, me taking other courses, me taking other things that I want to offer to the people in order for them to find their higher self. And I'm just going to say that if you can, Portugal is amazing. Uh, I have a very, uh, one of a very good friend of, uh, who is a breathwork instructor over there. He's an incredible man. Okay. And uh, what I'm just saying is that Portugal has a very high also healing energy and very mm -hmm. connective energy, very connected, like you feel connected. Yeah. So if you can, of course, I would, I would just going to say that you would feel such a gratitude that you see the shift and change, even though it can feel a little overwhelming, at least it felt for me. But I would, from now on, I, I always say, save your money from the psychics, save your money from, and put it into your investment of finding of who you are, yeah. because that's priceless. And that's what the lady who took a, took the, the course of the person we were talking and came to the retreat, she said, you know, Birgit, what you did, your uh, retreat is priceless. It's just priceless. There's no price on it because it changed so much in me. And that's all I wanted to say that I'm not, I'm not here to say I'm right or wrong, but I'm just here to say that if you find your true authentic self, it's priceless. Yes. Oh, that is so beautiful. And that is a big part of this journey. That is what yeah. this journey does. Your twin flame awakens you to become your truest, authentic Thanks. self. Yes. Yes. You know, my twin would always tell me, you're so real. You're so real. He would say, you're as real as it gets. And I remember I thought, you barely even know me. What do you mean? You know, yes. Yes. The, but he's like, he, I don't know if it was his higher self saying it or it just, he always felt it from before, even though it had been years, but it, it was like a push. It, you know, like, he thought that I was real. Like, imagine me now. Ah, we are, now we get real. We become our truest yeah. selves. Your twin flame triggers you. You Not your twin flame, but the journey triggers. triggers you to become so real and authentic and fulfill your purpose. And that's why so many things get removed from your life. Yeah. As hard as it is, and I want to remind people, I know it's hard. I've been having, you know, yeah. so many people have been coming to me saying, how do I leave my marriage? How did you do it? You know, I have kids too. It's so hard, uh, you know, and my person, he's, he's a great guy or this and that. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. It's not, it wasn't a walk in the park for me, but trust me, like I am literally the happiest I've ever been. Yes. Yes. And you can be too, yes. once you get out of those self-limiting beliefs, once you get out of that fear, because the only thing stopping you is yourself. It is those fears. It's those self-limiting beliefs. I will never forget how scared I was to leave 
and I was afraid of what could happen. I was afraid of the unknown. I was afraid of changing my mind and regretting it. And I don't one bit. In fact, I regret not doing it sooner. Yes. Okay. No offense. I put I regret not doing it sooner, yeah. Yeah. but everything happens the way it's meant to. But the more you prevent yourself and hinder yourself from achieving the life that you truly want and doing it for yourself and not for the sake of anyone else, but yeah. the life that you truly want and what makes you happy, the more you go for that, the happier you will become. I yeah. guarantee you, it will, you will feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders and yeah. you will feel so proud of yourself. And I guarantee you're going to feel your higher self going, yay, like my lid. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And, and that's, and that's why it's worth it. And that, like I said before, uh, twin flames are not toxic. Twin flames are love and let the love to come inside of you and you will see how the magic will start to happen. But that's why every little thing that is around you, that you consume, that you have, what you do with your habits, just start slowly paying attention to it because they create your reality and uh, your twin flame. And that's why you said something beautiful that your twin flame sees the best version of you. And so is us. We see the best version of them. Yes. That's why there is no toxicity. There is no such a that's thing that, true. oh, no, you see the best version of who they become. And that's... <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with the emotions over here, let's, let's kind of tr- tr- uh, stop for today or finish for today. And um, I'm just going to also say thank you for being here thank about so Jessica. You can find all the links are in bio, but Guided Space, I think you're on Instagram, TikTok, same name. And on YouTube, same name as well. Yeah, guided. same name. So I will be tagging everything and you're over there. Jessica is taking personalized calls. You can talk to her if you find her truth that really resonated with you. Just connect with her, talk to her. And the video version of this is out on Patreon. Those who would like to see us in live. Uh, otherwise, you just hear our versions over here. And if you really liked what we did, always let us know and we can continue doing it. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's been an honor, a really heartfelt uh, call. And I'm so grateful for you. And I hope that we can continue to do more things together. I also um, offer weekly calls if anybody, you know, doesn't want to do a one-on-one and just kind of wants guidance um, as a group because I know a lot of people have this fear of not being, you know, they feel alone on the journey. They don't have anyone else to talk to. So it's a good way to meet other divine feminines on the journey um, or masculines. I just haven't had masculines join the call yet, but other people on the journey so you don't feel alone and we can, you know, talk together. So you're welcome to join me on the weekly calls on Thursdays as well. But Wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you everyone who is listening today. You know that you are the love and light. And I hope to see you soon over here. So, yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>